It's time once again for America's favorite show, The Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd. Brought to you by DrFloyd.com. When we last left our hero, Dr. Floyd, things had certainly changed. His young protege, Dr. Grant, and his faithful robot companion, Chips, had gone off on their own pursuits and left Dr. Floyd all by himself. Then, Dr. Floyd's arch-nemesis, Dr. Steve, returned the time and space travel device he'd stolen way back in the very first episode of this radio show. Now, with nothing else to do, Dr. Floyd has decided to spend some time partaking in his favorite pastime reading. We now find our hero walking through the front doors of the Subtle River City Public Library. Oh, good afternoon there, Dr. Floyd. Good afternoon, Agnes. What brings you here today? I just popped in to do some book browsing in the greatest library on the planet. Is there some sort of doctor convention in town this week? Uh, Not that I know of. Why do you ask? We've just had a lot of doctors come in today. Really? Yeah. That's odd. Uh Uh-huh. Well, have fun browsing. I will, thanks. In a matter of moments, Dr. Floyd has made his way to his favorite section, a literature collection which is housed in the dimly lit basement of the library. Lost in the world of books, Dr. Floyd is almost oblivious to the mutterings of the other library patron in the next aisle over. Cause it's where could it be? Startled, Dr. Floyd peers through the shelves to the next aisle and comes face to face with none other than his arch nemesis, Dr. Steve, who is peering through the shelves back at him. Dr. Steve? Floyd, what are you doing here? I'm looking for a book to check out. What are you doing here? And what are you wearing on your head? Oh, this? This is my thinking cap. Your thinking cap? Yes, my mother always said that when I was tackling a tough problem, I should put on my thinking cap. Uh Uh-huh. And what tough problem are you tackling right now? I'm looking for a book to check out, but it's so hard to find things in this place. Hard to find things? It's super easy to find things at the library. You just use the Dewey Decimal System. The Jewelry Decibel System? The Dewey Decimal System. It's the method libraries use to organize the books. Wouldn't it just be easier to organize the books by height and color? Uh, no. That's how they did it back when libraries began, and it was darn near impossible to find anything. Then, in 1876, librarian Melville Dewey created the Dewey Decimal System to make it easier to find books. Uh, how does it work? Well, it divides all the knowledge in the world into ten main classes. For example, history is in the 900s, science is in the 500s, and technology is in the 600s. Then those classes are divided into ten divisions, and each of those divisions has ten sections. Books are then given a number within those sections, and you can use the number to find the book you're looking for. Floyd, you know I'm not good with numbers. You're going to have to do better than that. Well, it's... It's so easy. Oh, forget it. What kind of book are you looking for? I'd like to get a book on the life and times of Barry Manilow. Barry Manilow? Oh, brother. Don't you dare say anything bad about Barry, Floyd. Just tell me where to find a book about him. It should be around here somewhere. All right, calm down. It wouldn't be here. This is the literature section, which is in the 800s. This is where they have books by famous authors. Famous authors? Yeah, you know, writers of classic literature like Mark Twain, Charles Dickens, Herman Melville. Barry Manilow. Barry Manilow is not a famous author. Are you telling me that Mandy isn't a classic? Because if you are, our friendship ends right here and now. Friendship? What friendship? Never mind. Just tell me where I can find a book about Barry. All right. Well, a biography on Barry Manilow would probably be in the art section. That's the 700s, which is upstairs by the drinking fountain. Where's the drinking fountain? It's my first time here, remember? Meet me at the end of your aisle and I'll show you. As Dr. Floyd and Dr. Steed turn the corners at the end of their respective aisles, they are suddenly stopped by three figures standing in front of them in the muted light of the basement. Though their faces cannot be seen, Dr. Floyd can see that all three are in expensive looking suits. One made of merino, one of angora, and one of herringbone. Hello there, Floyd. Huh? Dr. Octavius Tannenbaum, is that you? Very perceptive, Floyd. Who's this guy? That's Dr. Octavius Tannenbaum. He was my third grade lab partner. I'm also the world's leading authority on lasers. Oh yeah, that too. Who's that with you, Octavius? Certainly you know who I am, Floyd. Dr. Alexandria Heron, the world's foremost expert on mechanical engineering? Correct. And do you recognize the third of our party? Greetings, Dr. Floyd. Why, it's Dr. Tufton Beamish III, the world's preeminent literature scholar. What are you three doing here? Together, we have formed a new association. A gathering of the greatest minds on Earth. Unified together to achieve a common goal. And from this day forward... Our association will be known... As the Literati. (laughs) <laughs> well, it's nice of you to come down here and ask me if I'd like to join your little club. Oh, we're not here to ask you to join us, Floyd. Certainly not. 
for the literati have joined forces to achieve a common goal. And that is to bring about the total destruction and complete annihilation of you, Dr. Floyd. What, 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 what? That's right. For some time now, we've had to sit in complacent silence as we watched you win the world's most brilliant scientist award year after year. While other great and worthy recipients, such as ourselves, were passed over without even a second glance. The only solution before us now is your complete and utter destruction, Dr. Floyd, which is why we have invented this. The three doctors step aside and reveal a large device that looks somewhat like a laser cannon. What is that thing? It looks somewhat like a laser cannon. Behold, the remote-controlled laser-powered Translitura! The most technologically advanced piece of machinery on the planet! The machine that will bring about the destruction of Dr. Floyd once and for all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Hold it there a minute. I don't know who you three think you are, but you're way out of line here. Uh, Dr. Steve, I don't think... Hush, Floyd. Let me handle this. You see, Dr. Floyd isn't Batman. He doesn't have a bunch of villains trying to destroy him. That's the comic books. This is real life. And in real life, he's only got one villain trying to destroy him, and that villain is me. Step aside, Dr. Steve. Our quarrel is not with you. Yes, our only aim is to get rid of Dr. Floyd. Which we shall do with a single push of the button on this remote control. Dr. Steve crosses to Alexandria Heron and swipes the remote control out of her hand. <gasps> Look, I appreciate the way you guys feel about Dr. Floyd. He is an annoying, small-headed little goober. <laughs> Dr. Steve, you're not helping. And you've built yourselves a fancy little machine here. But you're a little late to the Dr. Floyd arch-nemesis party. A party of one. Dr. Steve has now walked back to Dr. Floyd and put his arm around him. <sighs> you see, Dr. Floyd is my arch-nemesis, and I'm not going to stand idly by and let you three muscle in on my territory. So if anyone gets to push the button on this this remote control here, it should be me. Dr. Steve, no! Dr. Steve pushes the button on the remote control that turns on the Translatura. A beam of laser light shoots out of the end and engulfs Dr. Floyd and Dr. Steve, who still has his arm around our hero. The two find themselves unable to move as a low humming sound starts to build in the depths of the Translatura. Uh, uh, oh, this is just great, Dr. Steve. Now look what you've done. Push the button to turn it off. <laughs> I... I can't move, Floyd. This laser has me totally frozen. And as Dr. Floyd and Dr. Steve struggle to free themselves, the humming has grown louder and the literati have begun to chant. Double, double, toil and trouble. Floyd will soon be gone on the double. The world's most brilliant scientist will soon be gone. Dr. Floyd has lost and we have won. All scientific minds shall rejoice this day as we've sent Floyd far away. There is a loud bang and a blinding flash of light, and in an instant, Dr. Floyd and Dr. Steve have vanished. As small wisps of smoke begin to rise from where our hero and villain once stood, the literati begin to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it worked! Our incredible, beautiful machine has worked! Dr. Floyd is gone. God. <laughs> but that fool, Dr. Steve, took the remote control with him. This is not a concern, my friends. For if Dr. Steve took the remote with him, that means there's no way to control the Translitura. Which means? Which means? Oh, does this mean what I think it means? Yes. If the machine can't be controlled, there's no way to bring them back. <laughs> <laughs> As the literati celebrate in the library basement, we shall take our leave. Where has the Translatura sent Dr. Floyd and Dr. Steve? Will we ever see our hero and his arch nemesis again? And just what are Dr. Floyd and Dr. Steve thinking at this very moment? <laughs> Find out next time on the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd. Episode number 701 of the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd starred Allison Mork as Agnes the Librarian. Ken Greenwald as Dr. Octavius Tannenbaum. Leslie Carrara Rudolph as Dr. Alexandria Heron. Visit Leslie at www.spunkinsass.com. And Ron Lynch as Dr. Tufton Beamish III. Music for this episode by Jody Whitesides. www.jodywhitesides.com. This episode was written by Grant Pachoco. 
Leave us a voicemail at area code 818-332-3053. Episode number 701 of the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd is copyright 2008 Dr. Floyd Industries. All rights reserved. When in beautiful downtown Burbank, California, visit Dr. Floyd Studios. Go to www.drfloyd.com and click on Contact for more information. Clear the airwaves! Clear the airwaves! It's now time for Dr. Floyd's Imagination Nation Ranger's secret message for you members of the Dr. Floyd Imagination Nation. Remember, kids, only official radio adventures of Dr. Floyd Imagination Nation Rangers can decode Dr. Floyd's secret message with the secret decoder ring available only from www.imaginationranger.com. All right, grab your secret decoder rings and a pencil and paper and prepare to set your imagination to fun. Remember, Dr. Floyd is counting on you. And here is the Radio Adventures of Dr. Floyd Imagination Nation Ranger secret message for episode number 701, The Literati. Four, eight, two, eight, 25, two, three, 15, 13, seven, one, 17, 18, 17, 17, 8, 2, 25, 7, 1, 6. And that was a message from Dr. Floyd himself to all his Imagination Nation Rangers. You can join Dr. Floyd's Imagination Nation and become an Imagination Nation Ranger only at www.imaginationranger.com. And until next time, set your imagination to fun. Don't just sit there. You're under strict orders to go to www.perary.com. Hip.